I'm back with another episode of Prophecies MDM Bytes, where I share, briefly share information about uh, MDM best practices. I usually say three to four minutes, but they almost always go a little bit longer than that. So that's why I paused. Um, today, we are going to talk about MDM implementation styles. Now, I'm not going to bury the lead on this one. I'm going to go right out on a limb and say, I think we are thinking too much about implementation styles. Now, I'm going to slightly contradict myself and say they're important, and we'll talk about why they are important. But I do think that we are overthinking them, and I most certainly think that the historical four styles that have been acknowledged are way too complex unnecessarily so, and I really don't think that there are four anymore. I really only think there are two, and we'll talk about that in, in, in a lot more detail here. So why don't I share with you um, some content, a few slides that, uh, that that speak to the issue of MDM implementation styles. So first of all, as I said, they do matter. Why should we care about them? Um, implementation style will heavily influence five kind of key decisions that you have to make in an MDM program. Number one, scope and duration. Your style of MDM will, will drive how long it's going to take to get it implemented. Uh, number two, technical complexity. Of course, the more the more complex your implementation style, the more complex from a technology perspective you're going to be here. Your governance model. There is a big impact on your implementation, on your governance model from your implementation style. If you are implementing an operational MDM, then the governance model there needs to reflect that, and you need a relatively high level of maturity when it comes to data governance. So certainly things to consider there as well. Level of business disruption. If you implement an operational MDM, you will disrupt the business. You will change how you onboard customers or suppliers. You'll make some fields required that weren't required in the past and on and on. Implementation style will certainly have an influence on how much you ask of the business for uh, uh, to support your MDM uh, implementation. And, and lastly, the governance maturity required. So um, yes, there's work to implement governance and, the, and your governance model will be impacted, but uh, the level of maturity required is, is a big consideration here, right? If you, if, if you think that you're going to go into a large scale operational MDM that requires significant levels of data governance maturity, but you don't have it, that's certainly a red flag. So yes, implementation style does matter, but honestly, guys, I think historically we've been overthinking it. And by it, those are the four things, the four boxes that I've got on the screen here. These are the classic implementation style that I wrote about when I was an MDM analyst at Gartner. I published several documents that had these four boxes on them. So I know all about the consolidation, registry, coexistence, and centralized styles of MDM. If you peel the onion here, really the core questions to ask are over on the right-hand side of this slide. Where is the master data persisted? Is it in the hub or is it in the source? or maybe a combination. And number two, what's the system of record? Is it the MDM hub that's the system of record or is it one of the source systems that is the system of record? Really, those are the only two things that differentiate these four styles. Now, when the rubber hits the road and we start talking about implementation, who's actually implementing the implementation styles? That <laughs> sounds a little silly, but in my three years as a Gartner, nearly three years as a Gartner analyst, I had, well over 1500 conversations with companies a lot of them had to do about implementation styles and the fact of the matter is i never saw a registry implementation style in the wild not one in all of those conversations with big companies small companies average sized companies across every vertical you could ever imagine i never saw a single example of a registry style of mdf registry styles in essence are an academic expression of some of the questions that I've got on the on the screen here. They're, they're, they, they exist largely as a concept and not as something that people are implementing. The reason why is because they're very complex. You take some of the governance rules that would otherwise exist within things like how do I define a customer, where's the system of records, some of the issues related to onboarding and, 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 and management of data, and you really push them into integration. You, you create a very, very integration complex requirement here that is too burdensome for most companies. So registry forms of MDM are very, very complex from a registration perspective, from an integration perspective. And really, 
most companies are avoiding it because it's simple to create a consolidation style even if you don't use that, 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 that master record that you are creating as a part of a, a consolidation style, even if that master record that is persisted in the hub is just a stub, it's just a placeholder uh, to, 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 to manage the link between some master ID and all the various uh, uh, child IDs or, or sub IDs that are associated to the master ID. So I never see a registry. I think it's functionally dead. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate for any company. I haven't seen a single requirement in my experience that says you must do registry. So I think we can kind of put that one to bed, which means there's three styles that are left here. The one on the bottom right, centralized, I would argue is also functionally dead, at least from the perspective of individual domains. Now, there are valid use cases for taking centralized approaches to some data within the organization, particularly reference data. Reference data is a perfect expression of how it's a perfect way to use a centralized style, hub and spoke, top down, command and control style of MDM. I'm not seeing a lot of centralized MDMs anymore because for the most part, nobody wants to have that command and control environment. Nobody wants to take that top down approach to MDM. Most of the 95% of the companies that I'm talking to day in and day out want to have more of a hybrid style where it's a little bit of command and control but also a little bit of freedom for business units to do what they need to do and set some of their own rules. This is where most companies are going. So yes, centralized styles of MDM still exist, particularly for certain uh, types of data like reference data. But in terms of, uh, of, of the desired place to be from an operating model perspective, from an MDM operating model perspective, I don't see those command and control styles of MDM working very well anymore. This leads me really to the la my, my key point here, which is I really see there being only two styles of MDM implementation, an analytical style or an operational style. The two on the bottom, the coexistence pattern, the centralized pattern, these are both operational forms of MDM where you take data out of a hub and you push that into any of your workflows, application systems, downstream processes. Analytical MDMs are trying to solve for a 360 degree view of something, a single view of something where your core goal, your use cases at the beginning are simply to answer, you know, how many customers or products do we have, where an analytical approach to MDM can provide a ton of value. This is where most companies start their MDM journeys because you can drive a ton of value from an, an analytical MDM without enforcing a lot of those other things that I was talking about on the first slide, which is forcing business disruption, forcing you to up your game from a governance maturity perspective, forcing a lot of dependent work from a governance rules and policies and procedures perspective. You can avoid a lot of that by simply starting with an analytical style. So yes, implementation style is important. I would argue there's really only functionally two here. And if you're starting your MDM journey, I would argue that a great place to start is really from the perspective of a analytical MDM, and that probably you should mature over time into a more of an operational style of MDM. So that's our episode of MDM Bytes for today, talking about implementation styles. I look forward to your feedback on this in the comments below, or I would look forward to seeing you in some future version of MDM Bytes sometime soon. Thanks, guys.